This is Felicity Dykus, Chair of the ELECTS Continuing Education Committee. Welcome to the ELECTS webinar on RDA for Music Materials. I'm going to pause here because I don't see my slides up. Let's find out what happened. Okay, good. Okay, so this is our webinar on RDA Basics for Music Materials. Our presenter today is Mary Hussman. Music and Media Original Cataloger at the University of Minnesota. Mary is an active member of the Music Library Association and the online audiovisual catalogers. She's also been a member of the MLA OLAC funnel for that National Library RDA test and has been on the MLA RDA Implementation Task Force. So Mary brings a wealth of experience to our topic today. Just to let you know that everyone in the audience is muted. So if you have questions for Mary, please type them into the question box on your screen. Mary will answer the questions following her presentation. And if we go over time, she'll answer the remaining offline, and everyone will receive those answers by email. Today's session is being recorded, so you will all receive an email with a link to the recording and slides in a few days. We don't have a chat function that allows you to chat with each other. But if you like, please use that Twitter hashtag to chat about today's session. Mary and I will not be monitoring the Twitter feed, so please do use the question box if you have questions or comments. And now here's Mary. There'll be a slight delay as we switch speakers. Welcome, everyone. A review of, of the objectives for today's session. We will gain an understanding of the differences between AACR2 and RDA cataloging for music materials, locate RDA instructions pertaining to music materials in the RDA toolkit, identify new MARC 21 fields created to accommodate RDA elements, learn about music cataloging resources that supplement the RDA instructions pertaining to music materials. Before we begin, a few assumptions and caveats. I'm assuming that everyone has a basic familiarity with AACR2 and general RDA cataloging principles and MARC 21. It's helpful if you've had access to and experience with the RDA toolkit. And I am not necessarily assuming any musical background. A few caveats. Today's webinar is necessarily selective in nature. We will chiefly cover just the differences between AACR2 and RDA for music materials, although we may touch on some general concepts or instructions for context. RDA is dynamic as it, is, as it evolves into its final form. This process involves production of guides and best practices by various specialty communities, such as the Music Library Association. The RDA toolkit is updated on a regular schedule, and the April release is scheduled for the 22nd. The top five changes uh, that I see between AACR2 and, and RDA for music um, is the GMD being replaced by elements for content media and carrier, the rule of three which is eliminated, the principal performer concept for recordings which has been discontinued. Musical presentation statements now have a new home, and there are many changes to terminology, definitions, and abbreviations. The outline for today's webinar um, is given here. We'll cover some general topics, and we'll, we'll go on to describing manifestations, items, and carriers, take a look at some notes, access points, and relationships. So on to our general topics. Here are some of the resources you'll want to consult for music cataloging, in addition to the general RDA resources, such as the policy statements and PCC guidelines. The Music Cataloging at Yale site is a good general introduction to music cataloging. It has absolutely pretty much everything you'd want to know about uh, music cataloging. The Music Library Association has just issued its best practices for cataloging in RDA. The Types of Compositions document has also recently been revised for use with RDA. And this 
uh, document we'll talk about a little bit later. Finally, uh, the Music OCLC Users Group has offered its electronic di discussion list as a place to ask questions about RDA music cataloging. Subscription information is available at the organization's website. Moving on to terminology. You, you have no doubt encountered some of these new terms. A heading is now an authorized access point. A uniform title is now a preferred title. The last two things are of great interest to us because now a sound recording and a sound disc are now audio recordings and audio discs, respectively. RDA contains fewer abbreviations than AACR2. This list shows just a few of the music-related changes. The last entry is not really an abbreviation, but it's a change in a preferred term, although violoncello is still available for use as an alternative. And of course, being music cataloging, there are exceptions. We do need to use abbreviations for voice range designations, for opus and number in access points for works, for duration, for dimensions, and for thematic index numbers. And here is another um, document that the Music Library Association maintains, a list of thematic indexes used in Library of Congress in the National Authority file. A thematic catalog is an index of musical themes that's generally devoted to a single composer. Some of the new Mark 21 fields uh, for, the, for RDA elements, we will look at these um, as we go along but I've included just the summary here. So we'll start with the instructions for describing manifestations and items found in RDA Chapter 2. RDA has designated certain elements as core elements. These elements should always be included in the record if the information is available. LC and PCC have designated additional core elements. If information comes from outside the resource, this is a general thing, um, indicate, that those, indicate that through the use of square brackets or a note. When square brackets are used, they enclose each element rather than a single set of square brackets enclosing multiple elements as in AACR2. I've included these summary charts for you to refer to later on. We'll be passing over most of these in the interest of time. Moving on to our preferred source. The first thing we need to do is to determine what the preferred source of information will be. For notated music, the preferred source is the title page. If there is no title page, we must choose a substitute from this list in order of preference, a cover or jacket issued with the resource. For music material, sometimes there's a question as to what exactly constitutes a cover. It's generally considered to be something that's of substantially different material, either heavier, different color, than the paper that's inside the resource. A caption. This is the information that's found at the top of the first page of music. Or the colophon. Information found at the end of the resource. Note that this order of preference has changed from AACR2. AACR2 preferred the caption over the cover. Also, you'll see that list title pages are not given as an option. List title pages are common for sheet music, where the cover is literally a list of titles with a mark that indicates the piece that you have in hand. The preferred source for audio recordings is the resource itself. So in other words, the disc and its label. The disc label includes anything permanently affixed or printed on the disc surface. If the disc cannot be used as a preferred source, choose a substitute from this list in order of preference. An internal source, such as a title screen or menu. A container. And note that a container also includes the booklet that's visible through the jewel case. Or any other accompanying material. The title proper should always be taken from the preferred source. As in AACR2, determining the title proper also involves determining whether the title is a name of a type of composition, also sometimes referred to as generic titles. The choice between a generic and a distinctive title is important because it determines 
whether certain other elements are recorded as part of the title proper or as other title information. And those attributes would be medium of performance, a key, a date of composition, or some kind of numbering. The MLA Types of Compositions document is very helpful in determining whether a title is generic or distinctive. In this slide, we have some examples of, of generic and distinctive titles. The highlighted information shows you that sometimes the information will be included as part of the title proper in the generic title examples or as other title information in the distinctive title examples. <clears throat> the parallel title proper can be taken from any source. This too is a change from AECR2. Appendix D of the Music Library Association Best Practices document contains um, various scenarios with parallel element information. So for example, what to do with repeated words, titles that only have partial parallel information, and so on. In MARC, the parallel title is preceded by the equals sign. The parallel title should also be given a separate 246 field with the second indicator of 1, as is shown in the example below. Other title information is core for LCPCC. The source should be the same source as the title proper. Other title information that is taken from a different source as the title proper should be placed in the 246 field with the subfield I giving the source of the information. In the two examples, you see the first example has the information from the same source as the title proper, so it is contained in 245 subfield B. In the second example, the inf other title information is taken from a different source from the title proper and is recorded in the 246 field. <clears throat> Variant titles are not core, but often have information that is useful for discovery. A variant title is a title that differs from the title proper, the parallel title proper, or other title information. Variant titles may be taken from any source. Consult the policy statement at 2.3.6.3 for help with formulating variant titles. Record the variant titles in MARC fields 246 or 740 as appropriate. In this example, the variant title comes from the cover with the 246 giving us the second indicator 4 that tells us that it comes from the cover. The statement of responsibility should be taken from the same source as the title proper. If information is not available from that source, use another source within the resource. Or failing that, in order of preference, look, at, look for a, t a statement of responsibility information in the accompanying material that's not part of the resource, other published descriptions of the resource, a container that's not issued with the resource, or an external source. Only the statement relating to the title proper is core. Other statements are optional. However, it's a good idea to include. Performers for art music, or sometimes classical music, should not generally be recorded in the statement of responsibility, but instead in a note field. And we'll talk about that later on. However, performers of non-Western art music, so that would be pop music, jazz, world music, and so on, can be entered here. The MLA best practices recommends to generally consider that the participation of these performers is not limited to performance, um, execution, or interpretation, and to record statements identifying these performers as statements of responsibility. We'll also touch on this a bit later. The final two examples um, show that perf the performers should not be included in the statement of responsibility for classical music, but they are allowed for popular music. There are several changes to the addition statement, mostly for notated music. The addition statement should also be taken from the same source as the title proper. 
In RDA, edition statements now include voice range, not grammatically connected to the title, and musical presentation statements. These were formerly given in the Mark 254 field. Musical presentation statements refer to a description of the format of the edition. So for example, a symphony can be issued as a score, as a study score, a set of parts, or as a set of scoring parts. Multiple edition statements are common in notated music and are recorded, at least for now, in a single 250 field. Although the 250 is repeatable, it has not yet been implemented in OCLC. Separate each edition statement with a comma and capitalize the first word of each statement. Some notated music may be marked ur text, which may or may not be a true edition statement. Most are not. You can look in the authority file um, to see if, if it has been used as a series. But for most, um, generally record these as a quoted note. Here are some examples of edition statements. As you can see, the field becomes very crowded, as in the last example, where we have three edition statements. RDA offers more granularity in the recording of production, publication, distribution, manufacture, and copyright information. Production statements are used for unpublished resources. And in the interest of time, we aren't able to cover those today. The rest are used for published resources. Mark field 264 replaces the 260 field, although the 260 remains available for use. Three elements make up the publication statement. Place of publication, the name of the publisher, and publication date. The place of publication should come from the same source as the publisher name, which is taken from the same source as the title proper. In RDA, there is no option to shorten the publisher name. If there is uncertainty about the function, for example, a distributor or a publisher, give the name as a publisher. For audio recordings, the label name is used as in preference to the name of any larger company. If there is uncertainty of whether a name is a company or a label name, it's OK to record both. RDA also specifies that a publication date is to be recorded. However, we cannot substitute a copyright date. The distribution statement is core if there is no publication statement, and it is optional in all other cases. It's recorded in a MARC 264 field with the second indicator 2. Likewise, if there is no publication or distribution statement, then the manufacture statement becomes core. It is optional in all other cases. The copyright date is core if there is no publication or distribution date. The copyright date cannot be substituted for a publication date but it can be used to infer a publication date. The date should be preceded by the symbol or a spelled out form. Record copyright dates for notated music and phonogram dates for audio recordings. The phonogram date is preferred for audio recordings because it is the copyright of the recorded sound. Only the latest date needs to be recorded. However, if there are copyright dates covering multiple aspects, the latest of each may be recorded. Use a single 264 field in separate subfield Cs separated by a comma. Speaking of dates, let's decipher some of those dates generally found on an audio recording. The publication date, if it's present, but usually it is not. The phonogram date, which is the copyright date of the recorded sound. A copyright date, which usually refers to text or container artwork or something else that's not the sound. And the recording date, which refers to the date of the recording of the content. In addition, for reissues, you may find a date of the original release. 
In this example, um, the 264 for manufacturer would be optional, as would the second subfield C in the copyright date field. For audio recordings, as I've stated before, the phonogram date is the more valuable one since it refers to the copyright of the recorded sound. Dates associated with the recording of the content are recorded in the 518 and 033 fields. This is an example for notated music, much less complicated. The place of publication here has the name of the larger jurisdiction added uh, in parentheses because it's not on the resource. The date of publication is inferred from the copyright date. And again, the manufacturer and, dis and distributor statement would be optional. The table of identifiers most commonly associated with musical materials. ISBNs, EANs, and UPCs may be found on either scores or audio recordings. The EANs originally stood for European Article Number, but now it's just it's called International Article Number, but we pretty much retain the, the original acronym. Audio recordings are identified with issue numbers and in some cases matrix numbers. Matrix numbers are generally found on vinyl discs. Scores may have an international standard music number, a plate number, or a publisher number. All standard identifiers should be recorded, if at all possible. Place the publisher or label name, if it's an audio recording, in subfield B. Most of the O2X fields now have a subfield Q defined to record qualifying information. However, not all of these have been activated in OCLC. As of now, only the O28 subfield Q is active. When recording numbers, plate or publisher numbers for notated music, um, designations like number or catalog number are omitted. For audio recordings, if you have ready access to the original issue number, you can give that in an additional O28 field. Finally, it's not necessary to record any DIDX, or as we call them, LC in the bullet numbers found on audio recordings. These numbers refer to the manufacturing process and really have no bibliographic significance. Here are some examples of identifiers. Easy ways to, to identify a UPC code. It has 12 digits. The international article number has 13 digits. The ISMN looks like an ISBN number, but it begins with the 9790. The O28 um, example has a subfield Q to tell where the where this particular number is located, it's on disk 1. It may be a different number than the set number. Now we'll turn to describing carriers, which is in RDA Chapter 3. As noted earlier, one of the most visible examples of the change between AACR2 and RDA cataloging is the elimination of the GMD. The GMD has been replaced by a set of three elements, content type, media type, and carrier type. This set of elements provides more specificity than the GMD. Extent is covered as well in Chapter 3. I'm in also including format of notated music and duration here because in the MARC record they are placed with extent. Always record the primary content type of the resource. Optionally record any secondary content or accompanying material in separate 336 fields. Use the subfield 3 to explain anything else. Content types come from a list given at RDA 6.9.1.3. Include the subfield 2 RDA content when using these terms and don't include that 
subfield if you are taking the term from another source. Media type is not core for RDA, but it is core for LC-PCC. Again, record the primary and significant accompanying material media type using multiple 337 fields. Media terms come from the list at RDA 3.2.1.3. Record the carrier type of the resource and any significant accompanying material using separate 338 fields. Terms come from the list at 3.3.1.3. Content, media, and carrier may include codes in addition to the terms. The codes are automatically inserted if one is using the 33x macro available in connection. Additional content, media, and carrier types can be added for any significant accompanying material. If this resource had included significant text, like a book, for example, we could also add another set of content, media, and carrier types. But it's not necessary to add that for run-of-the-mill program notes. We would probably also want to add an 006 and an 007 for the accompanying DVD. Extent is defined as the number and type of units and or subunits making up a resource. For audio recordings, the unit is an audio disc. Specific instructions for the extent of notated music are given at, R at RDA 3.4.3, which then directs us to RDA 7.20.1.3 for a list of terms. For notated music, the unit would be a score of some kind, and the subunit would generally be a page. RDA gives an alternative to use a term in common usage for terms not in the list or if preferred by the cataloging agency. The policy statement allows the alternative, however, and the MLA, however, the MLA best practices discourages the use of terms in common usage for, for shared cataloging. Since the MARC 300 field is repeatable, multiple 300 fields can be used when multiple types of units, for example, scores and parts, or carriers, for example, a CD and a DVD, are present. The MLA best practices lean towards use of a single 300 field, as we did in, our, in AACR2, but ultimately did not give that as a recommendation. So you are free to use uh, whichever is better for your situation. We're going to take a brief detour to Chapter 7 to look at terms for extent given in the instruction at 7.20, the form, format of notated music. Several of these terms have changed from AACR2, in particular score, study score, and condensed score. We'll look at these on the next slide. Also, some new codes uh, for the fixed field have been defined but are not yet activated in connection. Speaking of definitions and changes, this is the big one. In RDA, all printed music is described as a score or part of some kind. A score is defined as a graphical, symbolic, or word-based musical notation representing the sounds of all of the parts of the ensemble or a work for solo performer or electronic media. So now music for a solo instrument or voice are considered scores rather than pages of music. Study scores are defined as a score issued in a musical image of reduced size, not primarily intended for use in performance. That's the key idea. It, is not, it does not necessarily mean that it is small in size. Rather, it's the intent of study rather than performance. A condensed score is defined as a score in which the number of staves is reduced to two or just a few, generally organized by instrumental section or vocal part. The key here is that all of the parts are given on a reduced number of staves, usually two. 
The best example to think of is a hymnal, where you have the four voice parts distributed over the two staves. We'll stay in Chapter 7 for a minute to talk about duration, a core element for LC. Recording duration has been greatly simplified from AECR2, particularly if the LCRI was being followed. Duration is a core element, and we should record total duration now in 300 subfield A for all materials, not just when there was a single work on the recording. It's okay to abbreviate hours, minutes, and seconds. However, we should use approximately instead of CA period since this element is not transcribed. Duration of individual works or parts are additionally recorded in either 500 or 505 contents or note fields. Plus, you can also give the duration in coded form in a 306 field. Now we're back to Chapter 3. Dimensions are a core element for LC, for resources that are not serials or online electronic resources. For notated music, remember that the CM is now a symbol, so there's no period, unless it's followed by a series statement, which would mark the end, the period would then mark the end of that area. For audio recordings, the policy statement directs us to use inches to describe disks in all audio carriers. Note that this PS policy statement does not extend to video cassettes. The MLA Best Practices Chapter 3 Appendix contains a chart to help with some of the standard dimensions for all sorts of audio materials. Here is an example, many examples of extent. And you can look at these at your leisure when you get the slides. Uh, the, the last Two sets of examples show the alternate ways you could do this, either in a single 300 field or the multiple 300 field. So now you are probably wondering, what happened to all that information that used to be in the 300 subfield B? Instead of jamming all those seemingly unrelated bits of information in that subfield, a new set of mark fields has been defined for, it, for this information. You may still record information in 300 subfield B, but the new 3-4-X fields offer more granularity and are generally preferred for RDA records. 340 subfield B may be used instead of or in addition to the 300 subfield C to record dimensions. 300, 340 subfield D may be used to record production method for manuscript notated music. The 344 field records technical specifications relating to the encoding of sound in a resource. There are more subfield defined, subfields defined, but these are the most commonly used. Subfield A contains the type of recording, analog or digital. Subfield C contains the playing speed. Subfield G contains the configuration of playback channels. It's not necessary to record things that are standard specifications. For example, it's not necessary to record subfield B optical or subfield C 1.4 meters per second for CDs. However, you would want to record the playing speed for vinyl discs because that value may vary. Subfield G is, record, is repeatable, so all playback configurations can be recorded. Note there are no longer periods following stereo or mono. The example given below adds the subfield to RDA because all of these terms are taken from the RDA vocabulary. Mark field 347 records the technical specifications relating to the digital encoding of audio in a resource. Record the file type from the list given at RDA 3.19.2.3, audio file. Record the encoding format using terms given in the list at 3.19.3.3. So terms like CD audio, 
DVD audio or SACD, Super Audio Compact Disc. Subfield B is repeatable, so for example, hybrid SACDs should include both CD audio and SACD. Note that Blu-ray audio is not in the list. So if you use Blu-ray audio in your subfield B, you can't, cannot use the subfield 2 RDA. At this point, we'll turn to notes. We're looking at notes from Chapter 2, Chapter 3, and Chapter 7. RDA doesn't consider any notes to be core, but LC-PCC does. The most common notes for music materials are listed below. There are more, obviously, but these are the ones um, that either have a change from AACR2 or there's some quirk that I, I felt needed to be uh, included uh, today. The important thing to remember is that no order of notes is prescribed in RDA. So mostly we can either keep these in the order of the instructions or ISBD order, or you can impose your local decisions on the order of these notes. For scores, the title source is assumed to be the, always from the preferred source. So a note is made only when the title comes from another source. For audio recordings, the source of title is always given. Use the system requirements note for any special equipment or requirements for use. Note that RDA does not have an option for a, a simple uh, compact disc note. The nature of the content may be given in an, a MARC 500 field, essentially unchanged from AACR2. It may also still be combined with the medium performance note. The medium of performance note is LCPCC core. If it's not, if this information is not stated clearly elsewhere or implied in other parts of the record, including subject headings. For audio recordings, we, we can record the place and date of the recording in a formatted 518 field. We can also record some of the information in an O33 field. PCC recommends use of this field for both audio and moving image resources. The first example here illustrates a formatted 518 field. The subfield O for the introductory word, subfield D for the date, and the date is always given in the year, month, day format and the subfield P for the place of the recording. The second example adds a subfield 3 to indicate that track 1 was recorded at this time and place. You do not have to use the formatted 518. You can still record all of your information in a simple subfield A. Sorting out where to record language information can be complicated. The policy statement and the MLA best practices direct us to record language for all of these types of linguistic content in these, in the, in, in these specific MARC fields. I did want to point out the difference in recording language of the primary content between notated music and audio recordings in the O41 field. Notated music records the language in subfield A, and for audio recordings, the language is recorded in subfield D. In addition to the language of the content, you may also record the original languages if you have that information readily available. The first example here is a score. The text is in Italian with German and English translations. The second and third examples are sound recordings. The third example is for a piece of instrumental music. 
Since there is no linguistic content, the fixed field gets the ZXX uh, code for no linguistic content. The 041 then just has subfield G for the accompanying material. The form of musical notation is defined as a set of characters and or symbols used to express the musical content of the resource. This is a core element for LCPCC and recorded in 546 subfield B. The MLA best practices recommend making this a separate note from the language note. Use terms from the list given at 7.13.3.3. These are the most likely uh, common these are likely the most common terms you will use. Staff notation refers to notes on a traditional music staff. Graphic notation refers to pictorial or drawn notation. Tablature is generally thought of as being for guitar or other such instrument, but the RDA definition is a bit broader than that. Performer narrator and presenter note applies to audio recordings and is a core element for PCC. Record performers, pre narrators, and presenters in the 511 field. In addition, give an authorized access point for all um, performers, narrators, or presenters as feasible. When giving an authorized access point for a performing group, it is not necessary to give AAPs for individual group members. The artistic and or technical credit note records information about contributors to the technical production in Mark 508. Include a statement of function along with the name. RDA treats contents notes as related works in 25.1. Related works are a core element for LC for compilations. The PCC recommends a full contents note for audio recording compilations along with authorized access points for all works in the compilation when feasible. Contents notes may also include duration, statements of responsibility, and performer information. Consult the policy statement at 25.1.1.3 for help in formulating a formal contents note. At this point, we'll shift gears a bit from our instruction-based description and look at some changes regarding access points. There is a set of new Mark 38X fields that have been defined uh, for both authority and bibliographic records. I feel that these are more appropriately placed in authority records. However, these fields may be used in bib records, but only for a single work or expression. The Music Library Association is working on a set of best practices dealing with medium of performance. In the example given below, the first indicator, <coughs> excuse me, zero for, indicates it's a medium of performance statement. The instrument is given in the subfield A, the number of performers in the subfield N immediately following the instrument. The subfield S at the end indicates the total number of performers. Another major change alluded to earlier is the elimination of the rule of three. That means there are no longer any limits on recording names, either in the statement of responsibility or in the number of medium of performance elements. Coming in the April toolkit release, um, we will also no longer have the standard combinations of instruments. And of course, this does not take place until it's actually published, so can't do that until April 22nd. Some other changes involving the rule of three um, and connected to compilations. Selections may now be used with two or more works. In AACR2, it required three or more works to use selections. In addition, selections can no longer be used by itself. It is always preceded by works. 
AACR2 also allowed the use of inclusive numbering for consecutively numbered works. RDA does not, so you must either make access points for each work or add selections to a collective preferred title, or do both. Here are some examples that illustrate that. The first example shows that four names can be listed in the Statement of Responsibility. The second example shows that we have way more than three elements in that uh, 240 field. In AACR2, you must, you were required to whittle that down into three or less. The third example shows the use of selections in the preferred title when there are only two works. On this CD, there were only the symphony number one and symphony number six. Finally, we will look at relationships. Again, there are core elements, both in RDA, LC, and LC, and the PCC. RDA is all about the relationship. There are relationships between the resource and persons, families, and corporate bodies. There are also relationships between resources. The instructions for these are contained in chapters 18 through 22. These chapters are arranged by the familiar WEMI level, work, expression, manifestation, and item. There, are also, there is also information in appendices I and J. Relationship designators are new to RDA. However, the concept isn't really new to music catalogers who have always been using the relator codes. Relationship designators should always be included whenever possible. The list of relationship designators is found in RDA Appendix I. The list is arranged by WEMI level. For example, composers are creators, so this term is given in the works list. Performers are associated at the expression level and are included in the expression list. There are two ways to express relationship designations in, an, in a MARC record. Use of subfield E with the spelled out relationship designator, or to continue to use subfield 4 with a relator code. Subfield E is preferred for RDA records. The only time we would not include a relationship designator is in a name title entry. Several changes will come about with the April toolkit release. There are expanded designators coming for the group um, of designators for based on and adapted as, plus there are other changes in terminology. For example, contains work will become container of work. Relationships between the resource and persons, families, or corporate bodies are as I said, categorized by WEMI level. So creators are found in 19.2. Creators are responsible for the work. For music materials, these are composers, librettists, or lyricists. A change from AACR2 for librettos. If you have just the libretto, you now enter that under the, under the, the author of the libretto, not the composer of the music. Creator, the creator with the principal responsibility, named first, is the core element. And the MLA best practices recommend recording all creators, if possible. So the first creator will get the mark 1xx, and any additional creators will be in 7xx fields. Contributors are responsible at the expression level. Examples of contributors for music materials include arrangers, performers, etc. PCC practice is to record a contributor if it's considered important for identification. They also, the guidelines are also to record at the most specific level, and that 
looks a bit interesting at first when you see a symphony orchestra described as an instrumentalist rather than a performer. The first example here uses the subfield E for the relationship designator term. The creator or composer gets the mark 100 field, while the contributor, the arranger, gets the 700 field. The second example shows use of the most specific designator, as I alluded to earlier, instrumentalist instead of performer. The third example shows no relationship designator um, for Schumann, the composer, even though we know he's a composer. But because it's a name title um, entry, we don't put in the subfield D for the composer. Can for performers be creators? This is the million dollar question, especially if you catalog recordings of popular music. So yes, sometimes they can be creators. RDA has no equivalent for the AACR2 LCRI 21.23C with the concept of principal performer. In RDA, the 1XX fields are reserved for creators, and folks who are strictly performers are not considered creators. There are conditions that have to be met for a performer to be considered a creator. So how do we determine this? You'll have to scan through the credits, look for who's, who has songwriting credits. Possibly you'll have to consult external resources, such as All Music, to find com composition information. In the MLA best practices, there's a, there's a decision tree that could help you sort some of this out. And as you can imagine, this is a very hot topic, and more work is being done by the MLA and others. So the bottom line to remember, just because a performer is prominently named on a resource doesn't give them creator status and the mark 1XX field. These two examples um, help show how the difficulties involved with determining whether a group or an individual is a creator or not. So the first, um, first example is fairly straightforward. There was information on the resource that said all songs written by the main. So main is given the, the main entry. <clears throat> They're in the statement of responsibility. Now the second example is a little more squishy. At first glance, I thought, well, this does not fit the creator test. But, but does it? So the note says, and it's quoted from the liner notes, that, this is, uh, that these are hybrid jazz covers of pop music from the 1970s. So my, my initial reaction to this was that because it uses the word covers, that's a, a, a term that generally implies that the version is very similar to the original, that this does not pass the creator test, that this music has not been substantially arranged or changed to become a new work. But because it's jazz, maybe I'm not, maybe that's not accurate. So now you can see a little bit of what the, what the dilemma will be. And it was very easy in AACR2 and we had the, the principal performer rule that we could just defer to. So stay tuned for further information. There are also relationships between resources and these are also organized along WEMI lines. So for works, um, adaptations, parts of larger works, expressions, translations, related manifestations, reprints, or facsimiles. These are expressed by use of an authorized access point, relationship designators, structured or unstructured descriptions, and a screen of examples. And now it's time for questions. Thank you, Mary.
I can picture sitting down with your PowerPoints and a sound recording now and, and cataloging a sound recording, which I couldn't do before. So let me start with some questions and remind everyone else if you have a question to type it into the question box. So a couple specific questions. With the multiple 300, is it okay to put company material in a separate 300 so you have a disk with one of the little booklets? Did you ever have a 300 for the little booklet? That's a good question. Generally, uh, for just the run-of-the-mill small booklet, I would say not. That's probably, if you must describe it, it's probably easier to describe that in a note field. The subfield, I think the subfield E in a single 300 field is generally reserved for things that are of a more substantial nature. If you had like a 300-page book that came with it, for example. Okay. You had the source of the title in a 500, but with some other types of material, it goes in a 588. So is that different from music material? Generally, I'm not seeing use of the 588 for music materials. I think that's a fairly new, um, a fairly new use of that field, and it may be extended to other formats in due course. Okay. What, what would you say is the biggest challenge of using RDA for music? Could you please repeat that? I couldn't hear, couldn't get that one. What is the biggest challenge in using RDA for music material? Okay. Um, it's exactly what I was talking about towards the end. Um, compilations with multiple creators. What to do with these? For me, that's easily the, the most challenging thing. <laughs> okay. yeah, I was surprised when you mentioned that all the abbreviations that are still used for music materials. Was that a decision by the music catalogers, or is that part of RDA? Um, I'm not sure that it's... I'm not sure exactly why, except for the fact that we've always used a lot of these um, abbreviations and they are just standard in, in music materials, especially like the voice, SATV for a voice designation. It seems rather silly to write out soprano, alto, tenor, bass in, in those cases. <laughs> and I think the other ones are just maybe more of convenience, the opus and number. And, and some of these are standard. The, Thematic index abbreviations are standard citations in, in research, so I, I think that's probably why those were retained. Okay. So we have time for one more question. Here it is. With the examples about relationships, could you tell us again why Schumann didn't get a relationship designator? The Schumann example was a name title added entry, and the PCC guidelines for relationship designators discourage use of a relationship designator, the subfield E designate, designator, in the middle of a name title entry. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary, for all that information and, and the resources and tips. Appreciate that. To our audience, trust you found today's session useful. And just a reminder, you will be getting an email with a short online evaluation form plus links to the presentation in PowerPoint slides. So please take time to fill out the questions and return the form to us. The committee uses those to plan future events. So we have several more webinars coming up this year. And here's a little synthesis. Make sure you're seeing my slides. So you'll be getting a list of the webinars and Anne that gives the link on the Alex website. So cataloging related ones. Let's see. Well, we have negotiation of e-resources, technical services. I'm going to point out this one next week about planning promotion and tenure, which will be helpful for tech services people. Our um, preservation week webinar webinars are without charge, so. You can sign up for the April 29th and May 1st ones for that. And two more MOOCs webinars coming up. 
We also have um, e-forums and web courses. And you'll find information for those on our website also. So thank you to Iping, Iping Chen Gaffey and Aaron Boyd and Vicki Brzezinski who provided the technical support today. The support we get from them make it possible to present these smoothly. Thanks to all of you for joining us. We hope to see you again at other Alex's continuing education webinars.